Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Um, this week we've got from Trumpeter the Soviet 2S7 self-propelled gun. This is a 135th scale kit. It's a pretty big box, uh, you can tell by my hands here in terms of scale. Uh, it does say the kit length is 375 millimeters and the width is 105.8 millimeters, and it says it has 1,000 plus pieces. So, yeah, um, the Soviet... Uh, Peony, Pion, or Malka is a, is a Soviet self propel gun designated 2S7 in Russia's Grau Index, identified in the West for the first time in 1975. It was therefore classified uh, M1975 by NATO. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and crack our open and take a look on this up the inside. So as you can see, there is lots of plastic. Um, we've got uh, lots of looks like outer hull, detail, um, some control, actually just some storage looking bins, um, but you can see there's quite a bit in here, maybe I'll kind of just give you a, a cavalcade of plastic here before I start looking at these individually. Um, a few little mini, mini packages here. This is my new camera setup. I have to be kind of careful because the camera really, because of the wide angle lens, literally the camera is about a hand span above the top of the box. So yeah, I can bump into that very easily and it's on a gooseneck and it's just gonna wobble around forever if I do that. Uh, upper hull, lower hull with some, looks like rubber or something, some kind of grommets and a piece of copper wire. More uh, small parts here, uh, clear. Photo etch. Um, more plastic. Looks like maybe some slide mold or some type of uh, front hull piece there. Another piece of plastic. Uh, decals. And the instruction manuals. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pile all this back up. And. Uh, See how I'm going to do this. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> My table here is actually a little small too for this. Uh, this is a large kit. Um, go ahead and start looking at some of this stuff first. This is that, uh, I believe, front hull piece with the um, the hatches on the top and a kind of a rounded section of the hull here. Um, there's some small weld beads in here. I don't know if you can kind of see that with the camera. Well, I guess we'll see how well this camera's doing, focus-wise. Uh, side hatch work here with some very fine hinges and a very small uh, panel line or hatch line there. Again, it looks like there's some welding on the side of here in terms of the feel. Um, but yeah, very nice detail. Typical trumpeter, uh, modern trumpeter look and uh, so forth. Uh, this has a lot of um, a lot of small detail pieces, probably various uh, hinges or not hinges, but uh, strut, struts. I was going to say for like storage, maybe. Not really sure. Pins, handles, grab handles, all these sorts of things. Let's look at the lower hull. Uh, copper wire. There's those little black uh, pieces. Uh, you can see trumpeters going with the more kind of detailed lower hulls now on their kits, which is nice. So it looks like there is some nice detail there. Um, again, some um, small weld marks and things like that up these up these uh, side hull panels. And here is the upper piece. Um, this piece again has, uh, let me see if we can kind of put the major parts together here. I'm going to guess that this goes up here. No. Where does this go? I'm lost. Where is this? Is this, uh, the upper? No. Huh. Well, this is interesting. I'll have to look at the direction to see why, why I'm so lost. Um, but yeah, the lower hull. Uh, it does have a, I can see some notches in here where it's notched. Probably see that there. 
Um, but it looks like it's going this way, so maybe I'm just wrong, facing the wrong direction. That's what that's what it must be. So this is the front, and this piece. Um, oh, I see. There's a hole. Okay, this piece fits on the front here. You can see the fits very good. I mean, that's there's a little bit of a small gap up here, but it's you know, very, 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 very small and not noticeable. Um, but yeah, then there's a, a section here that goes uh, on the front here that obviously is a separate section. But I'd say the fit on just these pieces putting them together is excellent. So, all right, well, moving on, we got the tracks. We'll do those later. And the clear. Let's take a look at some of the road wheels. All right, so uh, road wheels again have some nice front and rear detail. You can see the uh, ribbing, or I don't know what you call that, the raised panels, like, and they're repeated on the back here. I'm not sure which is the front. This is, I'm assuming this is the backing. And these have uh, pins, which obviously they're going to create one wheel together, or two wheels bolted together, I guess, would be more accurate. So there's like some nice fine details here. There will be photos at the end of the review, so if you want to uh, be patient for those, um, I'll try to get through this. This is a lot of plastic to try to look at, basically, but uh, yeah, some nice uh, springs there with the suspension. Same piece duplicated. Um, same piece duplicated again, so two sets of those wheels. Here's uh, another storage box. And again, you know, good detail. No production issues, and you can see it all. Uh, here's uh, a sprue with various uh, small bits like the shovel there. Um, a few more suspension parts, I guess, had to add to be added to these. Again, more some grab handles and really small uh, detail parts there. Um, various uh, shell, obviously, complete in one piece. And there are four of these. So they're all replicated there. And last little small-ish. One, we have some of the drive sprocket and idler wheels. Again, looks like some nice detail there, and this piece is duplicated, I believe. Yes. Um, you can see those. Uh, put these fit into these, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Just seeing if they're notched, but yeah, uh, again, nice details. Nice details. Hey, this piece has nice details, sorry. But, you know, sometimes you just, you know, it's like an author. What new thing can I say? In what new way? Yeah. Um, here's some of the uh, gun uh, armature hinge stuff. <laughs> I don't know what the, unless this looks like obviously the injection uh, port area or the, where the shell goes in. Again, not, a, not an artillery expert, so don't expect me to know all those terms. But you feel, feel free to point them out in the, uh, in the chat. Um, I mean, I do know what that is, the breach. Obviously, the breach. Uh, but I, they're not coming into my head rapidly. I'm, what can I say? I'm old. These things do not always immediately pop into my head. But, yeah, there's some more hatchwork. There's a very nice, uh, very smooth, very detailed. Uh, some of the... Uh, the um, what do you call these gear? They're not, it's not a gear, obviously, but it's a. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually sure what that's called. What they call that specific type of, of uh, movement mechanism, but obviously a, a gear runs that and, and moves it up and down, and that's how you aim the gun. Oh, some of the storage boxes here on the end, uh, looking like maybe they were required some some special uh, external slide molding. I don't, I, this piece looks is definitely slide molded here on the end. This is a single piece. Probably the lower part of the barrel, I guess, where it connects mid the midpoint. Has some little uh, little raised uh, divots there, and then another storage box here on the end again. And another piece with just lots of little bits. I mean, a thousand pieces. You guys who get this this one really, really, really want to build, have a, a long-term project, right? Um, I'm trying to remember if this artillery is in World of Tanks, but I don't, it doesn't ring a bell, so unless it's in there by another name, sometimes the names are slightly different. Uh, but yeah, more detail pieces. 
Um, some nice stuff there in the middle. These are all various, um, you know, just uh, gun or aiming system parts, hatches, seats. In the end, we have um, some protective um, bars here. Um, again, more of the, I think, the gun um, superstructure, not superstructure, the, the uh, framework. Oh, I touched the camera, didn't I? Sorry, camera. It's moving. Um, yep. Uh, all looks good. And then we get to one of the larger screws with some of those parts that were probably missing off of the uh, that, uh, front area, as well as looks like some rear hatches. And uh, these pieces look very detailed. Some of the uh, internal, maybe visible um, crew. All right, well, we're having a bit of a comedy of errors this week. I um, had to go back and redo this whole section of the video because uh, with this new camera and the file sizes and so forth, I ended up accident deleting part of the, half the file. Uh, so yeah, fun, fun, fun. All right, well, I don't remember where I was somewhere somewhere in this area and all, all the pieces are now opened because I'm redoing this section, obviously. But uh, yeah, I think I was talking about these interior parts that um, later on in the manual I'll show you where they do show quite a bit of the inter interior detail of the kit, at least the parts that are actually visible uh, via hatches and things like that. So it's nice that they give you that uh, that detail option. All right, well, moving on, I think I covered the tracks next. The tracks are an um, individual track link, plastic, uh, that snap together, and then there's a single um, track horn, I guess, or guide horn um, that goes... Um, is fixed somewhere in on one of these. I have to look at the manual actually. See, it doesn't look like it goes in the center, so that's why I'm a little bit thrown off. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look at that in the manual because I've already looked at it once. But they do give you the tool here to uh, help uh, line them up and click them together, which is nice also. Um, the last piece of regular plastic is the uh, two sides of the gun barrel, obviously, with other um, various uh, track, uh, add on track, spare tracks. Um, hookup points uh, for towing and things like that on the vehicle. It looks like some seats uh, on the inside here. But the uh, the barrel itself uh, is actually like a four-piece setup. So you have that piece that I showed earlier, and then there's another piece that goes here, and then there's an end cap that I'm not sure what, uh, where that was, but it looks like it's a single piece with rifling. Again, because I've already looked at the manual, so maybe I should look at the manuals first before I do these. I will understand the kit better. Uh, so. That's just an idea anyways. All right, well then we have uh, the clear, which I'm not gonna open this up because I'm just gonna take the photos of it uh, as my next step here. And um, they look you know, pretty pretty straightforward. The photo etch I did take out this time and uh, it looks nice and clean. It's got a clear protector sheet over it. Uh, mostly just the grills obviously with these other turbine vents or some kind of venting, fan venting or something. And then I'm not sure if that isn't a sighting element. I don't, wouldn't think a tank like this would use a manual sighting element, but it, it kind of looks like it. Maybe get it up against that black background there. You can see it there. Um, and uh, decals. Decals. Again, pretty simplistic. Some numbers. They do have these decals for, uh, I guess, part of the instruments to overlay um, various things over that plastic. And a couple of Russian red stars or Soviet red stars. Um, I'm not sure this uh, tank, this uh, artillery SPG is still in use, but obviously it might be in, still in use by the Russian army. They do give a painting and marking guide here in a, a single, obviously, green scheme that show the ammunition trailer down here as well. You can see it's a massively long barrel on the gun. Uh, going to the instructions, they are a fairly straightforward, typical set of Timmy instructions. We've got a parts overlay, which pretty much use, everything's used, I believe. They cover the assembly of the ammunition cart first, and then go into the actual lower hull and showing all the suspension. And, and as you can see, all the different internal parts. They've got uh, this section, this section, another forward section where the driver is maybe, uh, which all goes into place here with the radio. So very nice. And uh, coming uh, coming together here with all the wheels and seats added and
tracks put together. It looks like I guess it does go kind of in between the guide horn, in between the, uh, what's funny is, <coughs> I think I sneezed around the same time at this point. It must be the manuals. Maybe I'm allergic to manuals. Anyways, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, the rest of it is the obviously the, the main uh, section of the gun going together. Um, the, uh, what, what are the what are the tubes that are on the side? I've always been curious ever since I was building. Um, are these like counterweights? No, though. counterweights maybe, or just a weighting system. But uh, I've always been curious about that because obviously, like even German 88s have those on there. I mean, I'm assuming there would be some kind of um, balancing counterweight or aiming uh, system. But uh, I do not know. I am not an expert on artillery. But one of the people who manages Armorama is. Maybe he'll, he'll, he'll uh, let me know. All right, well, um, yeah, just continuing on lots of detail there. And there's the three-piece, uh, or I guess four-piece barrel. Uh, well, five pieces if you count the two sides, two halves. But actually, there's another piece that goes over this piece, so that's six pieces then uh, for the barrel. Um, and a little small, small little detail piece here with some kind of little hydraulic or something going on there, or attachment point. And then again, continuing, we've got uh, some of the top deck detail and going forward to the final steps of putting on that front cab section that I showed you and uh, top going on. And the, the uh, I was going to call it a dozer blade, but obviously some kind of rear stability uh, blade thing that, that digs into the ground and obviously keeps the keeps the SPG from from moving much when it's firing, so it doesn't lose its uh, I guess starting location. It has to keep re-aiming every time. Uh, you can see the gun actually goes in uh, almost last uh, onto the back. Uh, maybe drops in this pin right here. So I don't, maybe, maybe the gun actually obviously probably does move if you unless you glue it in place. But um, and then it also has a fixing position up here for for a mobile transport. So uh, that's done. Let's go ahead and uh, look at some photos, and then we'll come back and conclude.
photos on the Soviet 2S7 self-propelled gun. As I said, this one's going off to a reviewer who's been patiently waiting for it. And uh, hopefully he'll, uh, he'll be, I'm not sure if he's blogging it or just doing a build review or feature for us, but what, whatever he's doing, he'll be doing it hopefully soon. So um, thanks for watching, and thanks to Stevens International for sending us this review sample. Uh, we have more. Uh, if you're interested in doing a review for us, um, please uh, contact me at publisherkitmaker.net. Uh, again, we do like to have some kind of reference point to know that you are capable of shooting photos or uh, writing text and so forth. And so that can be accomplished by simply writing a review of one of your own products that you bought recently or one of your own kits uh, and then submitting it to the site. So then you can point and say, look, see, I've already done a review. And we can look at that and go, yes, you did a good job with that and we'll send you a kit. So that's, that's kind of the way that works. Um, so uh, again, thanks uh, for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them below. Uh, you can always give us a like if you like this video, and we will see you next time on Cracking the Box. Thank you.